want to give an update to the story with Quan Charles. Now, you know, that's the brother they found dead in the sugarcane field in Louisiana. So there was a new audio that had came out, shed more light on that young brother's death. Now he was 15 years old at the time. Now he died in a shallow Louisiana uh, marsh in the sugarcane field and his face was mutilated. Those of you who saw his face on social media, it was horrible. So you have this Mzungu female by the name of Janet Irvin. Um, she was one of the last people to see Charles alive and can be heard in that recording telling a private investigator that she failed to immediately call the police when she realized that he had disappeared from her home. And she says, yes, I should have called the cops. I should have went further. Um, now there was a private investigator that was hired by the attorneys. So the attorneys in this case is Ronald Haley Jr. and Chase Trichel. Um, they provided, you know, some of the recordings. So they said that Quan Charles was visiting, uh, this woman's son's home that was 17 years old. And they said that the private investigator also interviewed, uh, this woman's son. And he said that they were smoking weed together on October 30th, the day the parents reported him missing. Now they said the uh, female on Tuesday described the audio as a key piece of, you know, the puzzle that she was either a willing participant of drug use in her home or allowed it. So there was also, you know, talking about, they said that the biggest information is the fact that she knew where he went missing and she didn't do a thing at all. So they're waiting for the results from the toxicology report to see if he had narcotics in his system. Um, they said, according to witnesses, they say they saw Charles and two friends walk into a fishing Creek near Irvin's home on October uh, 31st. They said that they didn't report him missing until November the 2nd. So they said Louisiana state law says that you must report someone within two hours or not knowing their location or losing contact for a full day. And she had responsibility to report them to authorities. So they said that if that's the case, what's going on with her, um, she could be charged as well you know, in this particular case because she was a part of it. She allowed them to allegedly to use drugs, you know, in her home. Um, of course they did no Amber alert at all. Cause they don't do <laughs> Amber alerts too much for black children. I'm not saying they don't, but you know, that system wasn't even named after black people. It was named after a little white girl, you know, let's, let's, let's call it what it is. Um, but that is like the update to that story. Um, she, you know, is going to have herself nailed to the wall, um, with this situation. They said she is responsible. Uh, what happened? That's what the attorneys are saying because she didn't say anything. He said, they say she should be charged with murder. Um, they said, but they say left to be seen. They, they're waiting to get all the rest of the pieces of the evidence. But you know, this is what I always say, you know, your children shouldn't be leaving your home and you're not there. Okay. Your children should have be in a habit that I can't leave my home unless I ask because you know, when these kids just want to leave the house, you don't know where they at. Anything could happen. Anything. I remember when I was a teenager, I decided to leave the house, you know, go with my friends, uh, trick or treating at the time. And, um, when, my mom said we, I couldn't do that because she wasn't going to be home. So, you know, Philip and just decided to go do it anyway. And, uh, so we went out there, you know, trick or treat, whatever the neighborhood at night. And they had some oh, weirdo, you know, say, Hey, I got some candy for y'all. They're like, man, I ain't going over there. It was all dark. So he said, y'all come here. So, you know, like, nah, man, you know, we like stretching out the thing. You put it over here. No, nah, I'm good here. So, you know, they tried to get close to him or whatever, like just stretching the bag out. He tried to snatch, you know, and they were like, oh, hell no, you know, and everybody got away from him. But let's like, say if he got with somebody or whatever, what brought him in the house, no telling what he would have done to him. So that probably wouldn't have happened if I stayed my behind in the house. You know, of course, did I get in trouble? Oh, yes, I got in trouble big time. I definitely got in trouble. You know, I got punished. You know, got, got a little build action, you know, a little bit, you know, like I said, a little build don't hurt, didn't hurt me back, back in that time period, you know, just got my attention a little bit, but you know, I, I didn't do that again. I rather get the build at home and, 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 and some punishment than, than some race soldier putting 30 bullets in my back. You know, that's what the old people used to say It's better. I do it here than the police kill you out there in the street, but our children should not be going to nobody's house. 
I'm a firm believer of that. I'm like, and you ain't going to nobody's house. I tell my kids that you ain't going. They can come over here, but you ain't going. I don't know who in their house. I don't know what's going on. I know nothing. And that's a protection mechanism for my child. And if they can't deal with that, well, you can't talk to them. Cause it's going to be my way in what I'm talking about in the raising of you. So always your parents, make sure you let your kids know you can't go nowhere and get them a phone. They got a tracker, you know, get them an iPhone or something. Make sure that find my iPhone is on. It's your phone. You, you pay for that phone. You say that thing better be on. I know that much. And that way you can find out where your child is at all times. You just random want to type it in. Let's see where they at. They better be at the house. They ain't going to leave the house without that phone. Trust me on that. Now, some parents say, I'm not going to go through all that. Well, you know, when your children get a teenager, sometimes they do things. So you got to let them know that I'm monitoring you even when I'm not here. I'm monitoring you. So don't try me. Well, leave me a comment. Let me know the thing about the situation, you know, with this story. It's an update. We'll, we'll let you guys know um, what else happens once we, you know, hear more about um, the toxicology report. Like I said, at the end of the day, I don't really care what's in this system. I really don't. But the fact is, it doesn't explain that how he so-called drowned in a ditch with hardly no water in it. it doesn't make sense unless, like as the attorney said, they had outside forces that helped him drown in that ditch. <laughs>